Whoop. Uh, there we are. Hey, wave. <laughs> Whoa. Ah. Got a weird sound thing going on here. You hear that? Ah. Ah. Am I getting sound reverberation from the trailers? <laughs> oh, that's weird. Okay, I'm gonna stop that now. <laughs> the Green Dream Project, we're back at it again with another video. Jim here. Jessica. <laughs> And today we are on location for a special reason. We were tagged by Carlton over at the Pharmacy Seeds Network. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit and why we're here. So we are here because this is going to be the future location of our first garden, right? Jess, wave. So right about here is where, uh, where the garden will be. She's standing in the garden right now, approximately. How far exactly away do you think we are from the trailers now? Maybe 50 to 60. Really not too far from where we're living, which is good because like, you want your garden to be close. Yeah. And it's gonna be close to our future home. Yes. Obviously we're busy constructing this project right now, but then we'll be developing this area right out here in front on the north side, which will then become the site of our future home. And the garden will be one of the first things that we're getting. Water, water first. Water first, then food. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, but we've been tagged by Carlton over at the Pharmacy Seeds Network. And that's exactly why we're here on location at this spot. Because he challenged us in coming up with 10 reasons that we're homesteading, gardening, farming. So, reason number one. Because it beats going to the grocery store. Uh, it does beat going to the grocery store. Especially from where we live. It's a trip. I think there's a family dollar down the road, but you don't want to get your groceries from the family dollar, right? No, you don't. <laughs> and uh, Douglas is about a half hour away, and there's a bunch of options there, and that's where we usually go. But wouldn't it be nicer just to kind of walk out of the front door, go maybe less than 100 feet, and then pick your groceries from there? And I don't care whether it's the regular checkout or the self-checkout. You don't want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. And yes, and uh, the other day we were at Walmart and there was a stink. <laughs> there was a stink out there. Uh, let me tell you, that's not fun. I'm not saying there's not going to be stinks around here, but at least it's it's natural stinks. <laughs> I don't know what that was in that Walmart. It was unnatural. <laughs> It was definitely an unnatural stink. It's an abomination. All right, reason number two. Because playing in the dirt is good for you. So good for the mind, the body, and the soul. We were talking about the actual things in the soil that one, it, it can improve your mood. Two, we're like, you know, it's, uh, you know, being out there working with the dirt, you kind of inadvertently ingest, ingest it, and that can improve like your immune system. It can improve your gut health. Uh, I was just reading about uh, one particular soil microbe. It's called Mycobacterium vacae. Not vacae. Vacae. <laughs> I'm all about that. It's vacae. <laughs> But they've done studies on that and it may increase your serotonin levels in your brain which helps relax you and make you feel happier. Three. Preserving traditions. One thing, kind of uh, carrying on traditions of our ancestors. For me, my grandparents were a big inspiration to my way of life now. And my grandfather in particular, he was like a real self-starter. He built a house himself, 
had a small farm and just learned to do a lot of things himself and that was really inspirational for me. And two, traditions of indigenous people that I think it's important to not lose those. Uh, people who are more in touch with nature and their environment and living in balance with all that. Number four. Scenery. Check it out. Beautiful. Ah, uh, yeah. A lot of wide open fields. Uh, mountains, man. Mountains. Our neighbors are just far, far away. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but when you got work to do and just being out and being surrounded by beauty, it's it's nice. Yeah, um, uh, really, the only thing that I could see that we, you know, just adding more trees, yeah. and that would just make up with this place just about perfect. We got to get on the trees, honestly. Uh, so can you dig this scenery? We can. Five. Touched on it already, but connecting with nature. Sometimes uh, in the day-to-day -day hustle and bustle in the rat race, there's there's just not time. You like gotta take a vacation and then you can kind of go out and take a hike or something like that, get out into nature. But you know, here we we can literally connect with nature, have a relationship with it. We can get to know this land so well. On a daily basis. Yeah, and Man, just getting back to nature, living with nature, getting back into those rhythms and cycles of nature, so important. Six. Learning to be present. Well, that's a tough one, isn't it? That's a tough one for, for people in this day and age, I think. Yeah. People are always thinking about the future, people are stuck in the past, and just living for today. So important. And when you're working the land, so if you have to be really conscious about your present space and time, you know, when are you going to plant? What's appropriate for your situation, your environment, and the time? Seven. Being good stewards. Oh, <laughs> I, I didn't know you were going to start talking. I'm all shimmy. Dance off number two. Okay. <laughs> Okay, being good stewards of the earth and the soil in particular. Oh, Jess, don't get me started. Don't get me started on the soil. Ah, oh, stewardship of the soil is so important. Deep South Homestead, Big Bear Homestead, they've been talking about, uh, what's that, the, the New Green Deal. And it's all about cutting carbon emissions, like drastically. And of course, cutting your, cutting emissions is, is very important, but improving soil health goes way beyond that because carbon sequestration in the soil can absolutely turn around a, a lot of these effects environmental effects so really a big part of uh, attending to the soil and being stewardship of the land is changing the way we grow food we got to get away from these large localized industrialized uh, food production centers and get into uh, smaller, more spread out, more localized food production. Where we're caring for the soil, we're growing things that are in season, and we're not damaging the soil. We're not, you know, we're not doing monocrop crop uh, growing. We're doing polycultures and protecting that soil life and everything that depends on it, which is everything. It's literally our foundation. Yeah. I mean, it's not just something we walk on. With, uh, with uh, If the soil goes, if we deplete our soil health, that's it for, for all life on this planet. Hope that wasn't too overly dramatic. <laughs> but it can't be stressed enough. <clears throat> Better work. Eight. Number eight. Number eight, stay up late. <laughs> for the challenge. So homesteading 
in the desert. What? 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 <laughs> what? Well, anyway. Okay. What? <laughs> what? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think we owe little John some money now. Hey. <laughs> Got us again. <laughs> Damn you, little John! You can't own those words. Let's talk about the challenge and why why we want to challenge ourselves. Yeah, homesteading is just. It's just a font of challenges, challenges, right? Yeah, I've held numerous jobs and they've come with their challenges and each of them have been interesting in their own way. But the thing about me is that I would get into those jobs and I'd focus on them and I would get really good at them very fast and then I would get bored, incredibly bored. That's I think one of the positive things about this lifestyle is that you can kind of keep challenging yourself. You're not gonna get bored. Well, yeah. if you get bored, it's your own fault. <laughs> you know, we chose to live in a dry climate. Oh yeah. That's a whole another challenge. Yeah, bare land in the desert, having to build everything from scratch, getting water, water challenge. Like you want to grow food, you need water. Why would you pick the desert, right? That's crazy. I think we kind of we want to one like prove it to ourselves that we can do this, and you know maybe prove to other people that it's possible. Yeah, and if you can come into like a desert landscape and bring that into abundance, oh, that's a powerful action right there. I mean, just think of what Jeff Lawton's done in Jordan. It's happening, and you know, we're trying to we're trying to do our thing. Number nine. Because all the world's problems can be solved in a garden. The hell you say? <laughs> now this is a quote from. Uh, from our mentor. We both took uh, the PDCs from him, Mr. Jeff Lawton. And I just mentioned him in the last one. Weird, cool segue. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he uh, he said all the world's problems can be solved in a garden. And think about that for a little bit. Really think about like a lot of the issues going on in the world and how that could be solved by gardening. You know, generally people don't think too much of gardens. It's just like, oh, like some, like some people do it. Oh, it's a nice little hobby you got there. But I mean, ah, such a powerful act. Mm -hmm. You're taking so much power into your own hands. And all the potential things that you can learn, the values that you can gain from that experience can be really powerful. If people started gardening more, we could literally change the world for a better place. All my gardening peeps out there, let's change the world one garden at a time, am I right? Yeah, high fives. Pssh. Number 10, never sleep again. <laughs> Comment down below if you know what I'm doing with this. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't start out at the beginning, but you know the end. This is based on another one of our favorite quotes. Permaculture is a revolution disguised as gardening. Uh, and this quote comes from Jeff Lawton's mentor, Bill Mollison, one of the one of the, the creators of permaculture. And a lot of people come to permaculture uh, through gardening. The big misconception is that permaculture is a gardening method. It's a design science. What we're going to be using to design this entire stuff out here. Every placement from structures to garden design to where you're locating your animals. Permaculture involves that a lot. And one of the last things you'll learn about in permaculture is how to design society. So yeah, uh, permaculture, uh, learning about that, utilizing it, can not only make things much more incredibly effective on a homestead, but learning and applying those ethics to your everyday life can just improve life for everyone, it can improve society. Pow, that's the number 10. Many thanks to Carlton over at the Pharmacy Seeds Network for tagging us in this. We had a lot of fun, oh, and we hope you guys did too. So if you did have fun, please give us a big thumbs up. Is that big enough? My thumb's pretty good. Yeah, she, she has some pretty long thumbs. <laughs> please give us a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do. 
because we'd love to uh, we'd love to see you around. You can expect more of this, more talk about gardening, more talk about permaculture. Definitely stick around. Leave a comments down below. I want to hear from you. Share this with a friend or two because why should they share it with a friend or two? Because of all the things. That's perfect. And where can they follow us? Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. That's right. Thanks a lot for joining us on this video. We appreciate you stopping by. We'll catch you on the next video. Bye. Bye. <sighs> what is it? Uh oh, people are stopping and looking at us. That was weird. <laughs> Like, what are they doing? Okay. Uh, someone just stopped and stopped and stared. And stared. That's a little weird. <laughs> but I guess maybe it's a little weird for people to be standing out in the middle of a field filming themselves <laughs> with a camera. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's normal for us. Yeah. Now it's just a part of our life.